Okay, we're out here in Raleigh, North Carolina. It's about uh, you know, about 11 o'clock local time, waiting on Bill Clinton to show up. Uh, he's about an hour or two hours late. Uh, but he's been touring 11 cities today in North Carolina. This is his last stop tonight. Uh, we have learned also that he is going to be hitting up polling places all over the state tomorrow, which is election day. Uh, campaigning on behalf of his wife, who's going to spend the day in Indiana. So as, uh, as we wait for the speech, uh, we're listening to some corny music. <laughs> We've got to have a president who understands that no one can bring the American economy back if we keep doubling health care costs every seven years. It's going to bankrupt us all. And who understands that the only way we can ever get a hold of cost is to do the morally right thing and give affordable health care to every single American citizen, leaving no one out and no one behind. The people who are tired of making excuses and want to make progress on health care are going to vote for Hillary for president tomorrow because they know that she can deliver the goods for them. We need a president who understands we will never have the kind of trade policy we need in this country until we get a hold of this deficit because we're borrowing money every day from the countries that have big trade deficits, surpluses with us, and nobody slugs their banker. This is a real problem. She has told the people the whole story on this. We have no business having any trade agreement we can't enforce. Now look, no matter what you think about it, didn't it bother you when we had all those contaminated toys coming into this country? And nobody did anything, did they? I mean, nothing. Whatever your position on trade, didn't that bother you? The reason nobody did anything is because our biggest trade deficits are with China, Japan, Korea, and the oil countries. And every day, because of the deficit President Bush gave us, adding $4 trillion to the national debt, we have to borrow money. And our biggest lenders are China, Japan, Korea, and the oil countries. If you want to go back to a balanced budget and give the young people in this country their future back, you vote for Hillary for president. And don't you think it's interesting? Don't you think it's interesting that in this state, which understands better than any other the connection between education and your future economy, that she has been able to go all over North Carolina and get applause by telling people the truth, which is that you're doing great at the state level, but the federal government's policy is inadequate when you have student debt going up 50%, astronomical interest rates, and the number one federal initiative is No Child Left Behind, which won't work, can't work, and has to be changed. We have got to make something happen that helps North Carolina to educate its young people, send everybody to college, help them stay there, and give them college loans they can afford to repay. She is the only person that's done anything on this. We need to vote for her because she understands education and she'll be your partner, not an obstacle. She wants every young American to be able to go on to college. And she passed a bill late last year which says, don't you ever drop out again because you're afraid you're borrowing too much because no matter how much you borrow or how little you earn, you never have to quit again because you have an absolute right now to pay that loan back as a small percentage of your income over more years. Your country needs you. Don't you quit. We need a president who tells the young people of America, your country needs you again. And don't you think it's interesting that the first serious woman candidate for president is the one who has the support of not one, but two, former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, 35 retired generals and admirals, including General Hugh Shelton from North Carolina, who came home last Thursday and said, I want Hillary Clinton to be the commander in chief because she can end the war in Iraq with honor. And make sure that our badly strained military is rebuilt. You know we have given more than 4,000 lives. We have 70,000 wounded people. We have been in Iraq longer than we were in World War II, and we have used up the Army, the Marine Corps, the National Guard, the Reserves. We're training Navy reservists in Army infantry tactics and sending them to the Iraq theater. Hillary wants a country where we say we're back in the cooperation business, we're back in the diplomacy business, we're going to act alone only when we have to, and military force is going to be an absolute last resort, 
not the other way around. But she knows that you can't have that policy unless you have a credible, strong military. We can't keep breaking it down, trying to do something that can't be done. Our men and women have done everything they have been asked to do. It is time to bring them home so that we can rebuild the military and fight the Al-Qaeda wherever they are and take good care of these veterans. We must not make the mistake we made after Vietnam and confuse an unpopular war with our obligations to the men and women who served in it. She will never, ever, ever let that happen. It's another reason she ought to be the president. The last thing I want to say is this. When you, when you add all this up, it basically amounts to saying America ought to work the way this crowd looks tonight. I mean, look, wait a minute, be serious, look around here. Look at each other. Here we are, without regard to age, our gender, our race, our religion. We're all here because we love our country. We're all here because we want our future back. We're all here because we know we have to go there together. We can't leave anyone out or anyone behind. And I want to say one thing here in Raleigh. I spent most of my time in rural North Carolina. You know it, in these little towns. There's another big divide in America, too. The divide between the wealthier cities and suburbs and the small town and rural areas. She's going to bridge that divide, too. We have got to go forward together. Are you ready to elect a president? Yeah. Don't you know that Hillary would be the best? Yeah. Don't you believe in your heart that she can win here tomorrow if we get enough folks out? Yeah. And I want to ask you tonight, sleep on it, but not too long. <laughs> and when you get up tomorrow, you just remember, every person you call, every person you touch, every person you convince, every person you switch can make the difference. North Carolina can start an earthquake tomorrow. You know, they declared her dead more times than the cats got lives. But she just keeps coming back, doesn't she? No matter how much they outspend her, she comes back. Because of people like you. No matter what they say, she keeps coming back. It's a good thing. You don't want your president to be a quitter. I want your president to stay in there with you till the last dog dies, and she will. And you just remember this one last thing. She can win this election. She can beat her Republican opponent. She can win in Florida. She can win in Ohio. She can win in Pennsylvania. She can win in West Virginia. She can win in Arkansas. It would be a shame to have gone through this magnificent primary season when this country is aching and crying and pleading for change and not to win. So she would not only be the best president, she is a president we can elect to represent all of us so we can go forward into a brighter tomorrow together. You go out and win it for tomorrow, North Carolina. <laughs>